Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, unlike everyone else that seems to be making reaction videos to the Porter Robinson shelter, we're going to do some science and find out if the destruction portrayed in the music video is actually possible. Welcome to What The Math, let's do some science. <laughs> Now you may be asking yourself, what am I even talking about? Well, if you still haven't seen the amazing, amazing music video by Porter Robinson called Shelter, check it out in the link in the description below, or possibly just some of the scripts that I'll be showing you might be enough for you to kind of figure out what's going on. So this is actually a question that came from a person by the name of Bintan Aslama, and he sent me a message on Facebook saying, well, listen, Anton, there's this really cool video, and there's this like really cool collision in it, and is it real or not? Can it actually destroy the entire planet or not? Well, first of all, I actually wanted to show you the fragment of the video and that you can possibly kind of see on the screen right now, where you get to see what's actually happening, and it's... The only collision sort of hint is in the reflection of the window of the spacecraft and you can kind of see there's something going on there, something has been collided with Earth and you can even see the size of that object. First question I'm going to ask myself and try to answer is, well, what exactly is this object? So let's actually uh, take a look at it in a little bit more detail right here. And it becomes pretty clear that this is either a minor planet or specifically very likely to be a larger planet because in terms of size, it's actually very similar to Mercury, it seems. Like, there is actually not very much difference. It's actually maybe a little bit smaller than Mercury, uh, possibly size of a moon, like, for example, Titan. Actually, Titan seems to uh, fit the size description pretty well. All right, so that's that's pretty good so far. Uh, now, what else do we see in the uh, in the video here? What else is happening? Well, we see the collision, uh, but specifically, we actually see the atmosphere of this particular object. And there is really only um, a few objects that we know that have atmosphere that actually fit this size. And the only object I can think of is once again Titan. But can it actually be Titan? Well, let's place Titan here for a second and take a look at it. Oh no, it's falling apart because of the tidal effects. Uh, well, the thing is, is, you can't really see the surface of Titan, as, as you can kind of see, mostly because of, of its really, really interesting atmospheric composition. It reflects a lot of the light, so you can't really see what's happening on the surface, even though you might see some of the clouds. In the video, we see that we do see the surface, so maybe it is not Titan that is colliding with the planet, and, you know, why would Titan even come this far? So it's possibly some sort of uh, atmospheric object, possibly, uh, an unusual planet that somehow made its way to our planet Earth. Uh, well, this raises the next question. Can it actually happen? Is it possible? Well, we know that um, Earth did have a collision a long, long time ago with an object uh, approximately size of Mercury that we're going to simulate right now that actually created our moon. So this was an object by the name of Theia that... Uh, I've talked about previously in one of the videos, and here comes the Theia collision, an absolute tremendous explosion that then generated uh, a lot of debris that started flying around, orbiting around our planet Earth, and also created a very interesting dust cloud around our planet Earth that then coalesced into the moon. There it is. There you are, moon. It coalesced into you. So, it's uh, kind of possible that this was a planet, but it's very unlikely that this is a planet from our solar system. Or, if it is from our solar system, it's a planet that we haven't discovered yet. It's gotta be orbiting somewhere far, far away, uh, possibly on the outskirts of our solar system, way beyond Pluto, way beyond every other object we can think of. So, maybe it's a rogue planet. Maybe, just maybe, it's a planet that was kicked out from another solar system, and basically got attracted to our Earth somehow. Now, the problem with that theory, or this, I guess, hypothesis, is that the chance of that happening is so, 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 so tiny that it's very, 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 very unlikely to ever happen. In other words, uh, we don't really think that it's kind of possible. Uh, the planetary collisions are extremely rare. The planetary collisions with our own planet are even more rare. And the planetary collisions in our lifetime are supremely rare. Uh, it just there's no word to describe it better. You can check out some of the videos I made previously about the um, solar collisions, basically the chance of a star colliding with a star. Um, and there's one that I made where I actually did the math and showed you how infrequent they are. As a matter of fact, when our galaxy, the Milky Way, collides with another galaxy called the Andromeda in about 2.5 billion years, 
not a single star, not a single star will collide with another star. And it's very, very likely that not a single planet or an asteroid will collide either. So when this starts happening, as you'll see in a second, when they start colliding with each other and mixing and shuffling and creating this new huge galaxy called Milkdromeda, uh, not a single collision will occur because of the amount of space in between those stars. The chances are actually very, 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 very rare. There's definitely star collisions out there in the universe, but it's very unlikely to happen with our two galaxies colliding. So this brings us back to the point of, well, how likely is a planet to collide with our planet? And uh, the chance here is that maybe in like one trillion years, there might be some kind of a planetary collision, but that's a very long time to wait. I don't think it's going to happen. Now let's actually go back to the planetary collision that we do observe in the music video because it clearly happened. So um, if you haven't watched the video, so the father is trying to save his daughter because there is an, an imminent collision that's going to happen on our planet Earth. We're going to recreate this by randomly generating um, what seems to be a rocket planet. This is clearly a rocket planet that we see in the video. And this rocket planet clearly has an atmosphere and a very unusual color that I tried to recreate using the universe sandbox square. Now, I'm not sure if I got the size correctly, but let's find out. So this is going to be a planet uh, by the name of Olin, randomly generated, procedurally generated planet in the universe sandbox square. And it's going to be approaching Earth in a very similar fashion that we see in the um, in the music video named uh, called Shelter. So let's find out what's going to happen to our planet. You can probably imagine nothing good. And uh, this will hopefully answer the question that was asked on Facebook as well. So uh, let's actually briefly also talk about the potential scientific inaccuracies that we might observe in the um, in the music video. And one of them is, of course, uh, the fact that as soon as uh, Olin approaches Earth, uh, as we see in the music video, it should actually start uh, getting a little bit more squished and a little bit more spaghettified by the gravity of Earth. Specifically here, we're talking about the tidal effects. So right about now, it's going to start receiving these tidal effects and hopefully some of the particles will start flying off it uh, because it's being squished and twisted. So it sort of forms this type of shape uh, because of the uh, strong gravitational effects from our planet Earth. Uh, but we don't really observe them in the music video, and, but we might observe them right here if we wait long enough, especially if I actually decrease the velocity here a little bit because it's going a little bit too fast. Let's change this to about 7 kilometers per second. Give it some time to fall apart. And uh, right as it approaches Earth, it's going to start receiving really interesting effects. And of course, Earth would receive the same. And there you go. That's the title effects. We don't really see this in the music video, but they should have been there. And at the same time, some of the particles from Earth might do the same. So if you're standing right here, you might actually start getting attracted to the other object and uh, might even sort of fly off, although not necessarily. But so here come the first collisions, beautiful collisions that will start smacking into the planet Earth, creating a lot of tsunamis and basically destroying the world. Now, I guess in the music video, this kind of happened in Japan or close to Japan because that's it seems that's where the father and the daughter are. We are instead hitting what seems to be Mexico and Western US. But you know what? That's fine. So here's our collision. Here's kind of what we actually see in the music video. It kind of looks like this, I guess. Maybe this is a little bit bigger than it is in the music video, but maybe not. But essentially... This is what's going to happen to our planet if this ever sort of happens. A very big boom with a lot of particles going everywhere and you can see our planet sort of starts evaporating a little bit because of the sudden increase in temperature and sudden increase in energy all across the globe. Now this is actually not exactly what I expected. It didn't happen as I expected it would. This is actually kind of disappointing. This collision didn't work properly. Let's do another one. This is a failed collision, but I kind of like these scratch marks everywhere. This is very unusual. Very, very unusual. I've never seen this before. This is... maybe this is a bug. Or maybe this is just something that I haven't experienced before. But yeah, smoke in Earth is definitely something I've seen before, for sure. And now it's going to start burning up. But let's actually maybe try this again, but this time let's uh, use an object that is from our solar system. We're going to use a moon of Saturn known as Titan. And now this object is definitely going to create an interesting effect. 
And let's actually smack it down right uh, where it should be in Japan, which is right here. And so this is going to be a very interesting recreation of that particular scenario from this particular music video. So once again, what will happen? Oh, I don't know. Maybe some distraction, maybe some collisions and possibly some complete, uh, essentially total extinction of everything on Earth. Because this is more like it. There we go. Look at this beautiful, tremendous, super powerful explosion that will not only shelter, not shelter, what am I saying, uh, destroy and shatter everything on Earth, but it will also very likely change the orbit of our planet. It will very likely put us into a completely different orbit that may actually either take us closer to the sun or take us farther away from the sun. And then for all we know, we might end up in the asteroid belt and expect a lot more collisions. But I'm going to try this in a second, but first I actually wanted to take a look at this. I wanted to see how long it will actually take for our planet, our beautiful, gorgeous, former home, to cool down now. So we're at 1365 degrees Celsius. But as you can see, temperature is already dropping very, very slowly. So this is two days later. Let's actually wait a little bit longer. Let's wait like a year and see if the temperature actually decreases um, by, by a lot. And it seems like the temperature decreases by about one degree, something like every four years. And yeah, we have a lot of degrees to go through, so we're not going to wait through this, but it will be a long, long time that the girl will be waiting for the planet to actually uh, become habitable again. I think that's actually what that was kind of the point of the video that the father tries to basically save his daughter and sends her in a spacecraft somewhere out there. We don't really know where she's going, but maybe she's just orbiting Earth. And if she is orbiting Earth, Oh my god, she's gonna be there for a while. Because even after 32 years, the temperature has only decreased by about 7 degrees. So you can do the math and figure out how long it will take. But if you're too lazy to do the math, it's something over like 6,000 years, I think. Or possibly close to that. So yeah, that's a long time to wait for the planet to actually cool down. Probably not the best scenario for a father to choose for his daughter. Although maybe I'm wrong, maybe she just actually go into some completely different uh, solar system somewhere out there for an alien species to find and save her. But before we finish this video, let's actually try to collide um, the object with our planet Earth in the actual solar system and see if the orbit of our planet changes as well. So we're going to pick a randomly generated planet that we're going to choose from right here. We're going to launch it at what seems to be Japan. We're going to also change its parameters a little bit making it look a little bit more like the uh, object we see in the music video. And now, actually, let's slow down time dramatically and see what happens. So here comes the object. It's going to be another collision with what seems to be Japan. And this is what's going to happen to our planet Earth. So let's actually look at its orbital parameters here. And let's see how, by how much the uh, semi-major axis, which is the distance to the sun, and also the eccentricity change as well. And boom. All right, so yeah, eccentricity is increasing. The same major axis is increasing as well. It's about 1.1 astronomical units now. Um, but the planet Earth is not going to be flying um, far off. It's actually still going to be within the same region. It's just going to have a lot more extreme uh, seasons now. Actually, maybe I should show you the explosion first before I zoom out. And so here is the explosion and everything kind of falls down back to Earth. Everyone is obviously dead. The father of the girl sacrificed himself, built the spacecraft, and yeah. Anyway, but do watch the music video. It's actually really, really, really awesome. Anyway, so let's go zoom out of here and take a look at the orbit. And this is what the orbit of Earth, the new, new Earth is. It's sort of similar to what it used to be. Uh, the old Earth or orbit was was right here and i'm gonna just introduce both orbits and the new or earth orbit is right there so it's just a little bit more eccentric so it's going to approach closer to mars now but it's not going to fly off anywhere super super far uh, and as you can see the earth is also spinning really funny it's been tilted to its side it seems because of the collision so now the actual um uh, axis has been changed and it's definitely going to change a few more things other than seasons. As you can see, it's actually orbiting in a completely different direction now. 
And so that's really all I wanted to do in this video, and I wanted to kind of just talk about this music video, and while everyone was making emotional reaction videos, I wanted to just basically talk about Shelter from the scientific perspective and introduce a few collisions here and there. And thank you so much, uh, Bintang, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, for uh, raising this question, because it is kind of interesting. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, science videos, and math videos using video games. And don't forget to subscribe and possibly even support this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye. And I'm so sorry, Earth. I've destroyed you so many times now, it's not even funny anymore.